Welcome back, everyone, to our series. We are going to pick it up right where we left off uh, in our last episode. We were in uh, about 155 AD, where Polycarp went to Pope Anicetus to try to compel him to observe the Passover scripturally, uh, to do so in the way that the apostles had done. Uh, unfortunately, Pope Anicetus wasn't going to have it. They wanted to, to observe Passover in, in the course of a new order, uh, really an order that can't be supported scripturally nor in, in the apostolic age. Um, and so not being able to be persuaded, they continued uh, to really express Passover in this new light of what we would call today Ishtar or Easter. Well, we're going to push forward a little bit because 15 years later in about 170 AD, the controversy comes back. And this time the controversy arises between Melito of Sardis and Apollinarius of Hierapolis. And Melito of Sardis is taking the position of Polycarp because this is all Asia is celebrating the Passover as instructed in the Bible as the apostles did so. And you think about Melito of Sardis, that term Sardis is, uh, you'll find this is the very church that Jesus himself spoke to in the book of Revelation. It's one of the seven churches. And here you have this iconic figure, Melito, who very well, very much so is influential in that part of the region, holding fast to the word of God, holding fast to the instructions of the law in regard to keeping the feast for seven days and, and abstaining from leaven during that time. But Apollinarius took the position of Pope Anicetus. And so this, this controversy comes back to the table and no, it can't be settled. Well, fast forward about another 20 years to, to 8190, and the controversy really is going to hit a, a crescendo moment. And this is where Polycrates comes to Pope Victor. Well, I want to read to you, we, we have this commentary found by Eusebius in his work of church history. I want to read to you what he records in regard to this interaction. A question of no small importance arose at that time. And I love how this opens up because this is of no small importance, meaning the weight and the gravity of this issue and this topic is huge. It's monumental. Now it goes on and it says, For the parishes of all Asia as from an older tradition held that the 14th day of the moon, on which day the Jews were commanded to sacrifice the lamb, should be observed as the feast of the Savior's Passover. In other words, according to what the law has written, according to what's embedded in Scripture, this is how... Um, you know, Polycrates and Polycarp and Melito, this is how they are proclaiming this is to be observed. Well, jumping ahead, we continue. But the bishops of Asia, led by Polycrates, decided to hold to the old custom handed down to them. He himself, in a letter which he addressed to Victor and the Church of Rome, set forth in the following words the tradition which had come down to him. Now listen to these words. We observe the exact day, neither adding nor taking away. Isn't that interesting? So Polycrates comes on the scene and says, we are not adding to the scripture, nor are we going to take from it, but we are going to do exactly as it prescribes. Well, Polycrates goes on in this passage to list all these amazing men of God who have adhered to the scriptural testimony, men like the, uh, the Apostle John, men like the Apostle Philip. Uh, we, he lists Polycarp. He lists Melito. He lists others. These, these righteous men as a template saying, look at these men. These men have always kept it. And then we pick it up here. 
All these observed the 14th day of the Passover, according to the gospel, deviating in no respect, but following the rule of faith. And I also, Polycrates, the least of you all, do according to the tradition of my relatives, some of whom I have closely followed. For seven of my relatives were bishops, and I am the eighth, and my relatives always observe the day when the people put away the leaven. And I want to stop here because a significant part that of, of the expression of Passover is you put away the leaven. This is what is uh, this is what is instructed in the law, that you get the leaven out of your houses for seven days. And, and, you know, the whole concept of eating leavened bread, you know, at times scripture uh, represents leaven as sin. And, And there's great meaning in that, that you're to get the sin out of your house. You're to cleanse your heart. And this is the very thing Paul is instructing the church at Corinth to do as they enter into this festival, to spiritually get that leaven out. And you would also practice that physically. Now, continuing, I therefore, brethren, who have lived 65 years in the Lord and have met with the brethren throughout the world and have gone through every holy scripture, am not affrighted by terrifying words. For those greater than I have said, we ought to obey God rather than man. How true those words are. In other words, Polycrates says, I am not going to be intimidated. I've scoured the word. We are adhering to the word. And whether it's right in the sight of God to listen to you more than God, you judge. This is the mentality. No, this this has to be the mentality of the believers in Jesus in this generation. If 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 we're going to stand against the spirit of Antichrist, this is the persona we must have. This is the kind of faith we must have. This is the kind of surrender we must have to Jesus. All out, where you and I love the song. I surrender all. Unto thee, O Jesus, I surrender all. This is who we need to be. Now, continuing, we read, Thereupon Victor, who presided over the church at Rome, immediately attempted to cut off from the common unity the parishes of all Asia, with the churches that agreed with them as heterodox, meaning heretical. And he wrote letters and declared all the brethren there wholly excommunicated. Now you can see this has reached this controversy, which again is not a small matter. Theologically, this is a massive issue. You can see it reaches a flashpoint. And now there's a massive schism in the church. And the church at Rome is breaking off. They're offended. At these, other church, at these other Christians and these other churches who would keep it according to Scripture, who would, who would observe the Passover in light of the Word of God, and to do it as the apostles were doing. The church at Rome is offended because in their mind, well, you're not acknowledging the resurrection of the Lord. You're not glorifying the Lord in this manner to do it the way we're doing it in Rome. You know, I got to tell you, man, the, 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 the things that have crept into the church, the ugly things that have crept into the church, you know, there's a saying, all roads lead to Rome. Uh, you know what? Unfortunately, in, in the realm of our discussion, there's a lot of truth to that. In fact, you're going to see how much truth there is to that as we get into our next video. Stay tuned. May the Lord bless you and keep you.